I call the shots, I never call it quits. Trust my intuition, bet it's right and bitch it often is. Seen too many others come and go, they had the wrong intent. Do it out of love and never for it, then I watch it get bigger than expected. Don't second guess it, I let it set it. It's God's plan, we out here only accepting blessings. I'm stuck with it, this mindset is terminal. In and out different terminals, leveling up is personal. Now I already made it, y'all can miss me. I smack my girl's ass, tell her pinch me. It's hard to believe I made something from nothing. No hindsight discussions. I've been writing, I love it. Welcome to the Three Gig Sports Podcast, where we are never wrong, just sometimes misinformed. Danny G, Miley, and Jim are in the house tonight, and we're going to kick this bad boy off with an interview. We've got a big time thing. I believe it debuts tomorrow called Power Slap, and uh, we've got one of our kind of, I guess we'll say veteran interviews here. We've interviewed John Kennedy a few different times for North Iowa fights and things like that. How you doing tonight, John? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How about you guys? Not too bad. Trying to stay warm. Trying to stay awake. (laughs) Trying to stay awake. I hear that. I hear that. A hundred percent, man. So let's get this going, man. So Power Slap, right? How'd you get involved in all this, John? It's a weird uh, thing. So, uh, you know, uh, on, on Facebook, they got a looking for fighters thing. And I seen the thing on there said, uh, new combat sports league coming, um, paid tryout. So, you know, I, Hey, I love money. So I was like, you know, the combat and I love combat sports. So it just went hand in hand. And it just so happens two weeks before this, I seen these tryouts. I, uh, had gotten an altercation with my son's mom, uh, her boyfriend. And I ended up slapping the shit out of him. <laughs> Whoa. And, uh, two weeks later, two weeks later, I see trials for this. And so I tell everybody, I'm like, you know, I'm going to go out. I'm going to go out and I'm going to try out for this. And uh, I'm like, you know, there three things can happen here. Either A, I can get out, to, you know, because out in Las Vegas at the Apex. And uh, I was like, three things can happen. Either A, you know, they, they bought my plane ticket and everything. So I'm like, either A, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to get sold into the sex trade. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to be there to pick me up. <laughs> or it's gonna be legit, and I'm gonna be able to. Someone's gonna be there, pick me up from the airport, and it's a legit thing. Turns out, you know, is the latter of the three. So it <laughs> turned out a, a guy named Sal was there, and it's a uh, it's production. Uh, Frank and Gary DeFranco, the same guys that put on the Ultimate Fighter, uh, came up with it. So okay, damn, yeah. hell so, yeah, so, by Dana White. So so you're not in the sex trade. No, no, definitely not in the sex trade. Oh shit! I was trying to go to Vegas. Maybe I was. Maybe I. You could like get me sold. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they, they'd have to. Yes, sir, you'd have yes, to pay sir. them money. I'd lose my virginity finally. <laughs> finally. <laughs> that makes two of us. So talk about that. Uh, that fr- that first like day or so after you realize you got picked up, and that everything's real and all that. Uh, tell us. Yeah. Tell us how yeah. it all broke down. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, John. Don't don't let him cut you short. So you slap the shit. We'll you, come back to that. You, I want, we want to talk about that. We'll oh, come back to that. I want to. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> we'll come back. To All that. right. All right. Yeah. So yeah. We'll come back. That's basically how it led up. And so, uh, you know, so I got out there and they took us to a nice hotel uh, there in Las Vegas. And um, so I was like, all right, you know, and everything was like in a hotel, you know, like we. Th- this time was back in March and they let us have our phones and stuff. But this time then. Uh, so I had two slap matches. You know, I can't really tell you what happened due to a, an NDA agreement that I signed so um, it, for the tryouts. And, uh, you know, they called me back in, I believe, October and asked why they gave me a six-fight uh, contract with the Power Slap and asked why I wanted to come out there in November to do tryouts for – well, not tryouts, but to participate in an event and to get in, like, the slap house, I guess you would call it. Okay. That's badass. Oh, shit. No, yeah. Notice how he said he signed an NDA, but they called him back for six. <laughs> yeah. So I'd say you did pretty yeah. well, John. You <laughs> yeah. got invited for a six fight, yeah. essentially I mean, yeah. six slap contract. Out. Yeah. And well, there was no lie that I got, you know, everybody knew I was going out there. Um, yeah. But, you know, we're not allowed to talk about what it goes on in the in the slap house. So All right, I got you. OK, OK. So how long after you... the NDA comes in is in the slap house on like from from November 27th on. I'm not allowed to talk about. Yeah, I got you. You uh, uh, That's too bad. We were going to try to get some inside info, but the NDA <laughs> is here, bro. <laughs> we hey, get if it. You, if, you, if you like, if you like, uh, if you go to Power Slap Instagram, they got a lot of like little like highlights and shit. Uh, Dana White was talking to Patty Pimblett about it. Uh, you know, because we, we used the uh, PI, the USC PI and the Apex was like 
our go-to spot. So okay. you'll see a lot of USC fighters. Carlos Mota was out there. Okay. Um, you know, so we've seen him. Uh, Patty, Francis, uh, Sugar Sean, Malley. But uh, Dana was talking to Patty Pimblett on one of his podcasts, and he's like, the way he labeled it, and, you know, now I guess I could talk about come talking about their podcast. Dana labeled it as a prison type melee brawl. And like I said, it was two weeks, you know, and Dana said it felt like two months. Okay. You know, All right. So yeah. It's yeah. definitely going to be exciting to watch. So, so you stayed up in this house for two weeks. Is that what, is that what I just gathered? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you guys like lived with each other and all that, like in, yeah, in between, was, in between was 22 the two grown ass men. Uh, unlimited howler head and no weed. So <laughs> in LA, like, I'm like, what the fuck, man? Like, can we get some weed? <laughs> yeah. We've all seen some, like, I, I don't know if it's like behind the scenes, like slaps or anything like that, but we've definitely seen some things come across the socials and it looks like it's a good time and it looks like there could be some damage done too, man. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely some damage. Uh, like I said, you know, it, and it's, you know, it's all about who gets the first slap and how good you can take a slap. Right. Shout out to my baby mom for preparing me for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you kind of rolled back into that, let's dip back into time a little bit. Miles, you had a question? Oh, I, I was going to, but I'm watching this video of this guy smacking John right now with his cheek about seven yeah, times yeah. the size wesley Looking like drain. A yeah so so back home in kentucky we people chew so much tobacco that their uh th their mouth permanently looks like that <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. shit yeah. okay and that that was that's what i'm saying man you know like and i don't want to really give away what happened but uh you know you can kind of tell in the video uh but like i said you know so One you, more hit, he would have been done. So oh you my God. you obviously, up until March, had never done anything like this, right? No, fuck no. So I never even, you know what? And I never even thought I would ever be in like a slap fight. I've watched him over in Russia, like on YouTube and shit, and I yeah. never thought, you know, uh, I would ever be participating in something like that. I just thought it'd be fun, you know? And Right. So anyone that would like be looking at it, be like, yeah, it's just a slap thing. Jesus, so how bad can it be? Explain how much that, how, explain how much that hurts versus like something in the old octagon there. Okay, in the octagon, you can prepare and protect yourself from the slap. And here when you're getting slapped, your hands are behind your back holding like a pool noodle. Oh, That's behind your back. Okay. So with your chin tucked out, you're not allowed to tuck your chin, you're not allowed to flinch, none of that and uh yeah, you just got to take the fucking the, the 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 best part about it is that uh well, i'm trying to share you guys thing here so we can get some more people on here but uh sorry about that no you're oh, good yeah. so uh the, the best part about it is uh so they tell you which hand they're gonna slap with so it all goes by a coin toss and you can now you got three turns you know like he slaps me i slap him i slap him he slaps me you know yep um alternating turns for three times unless it's a title fight which you will get five slaps Oof. yeah okay. so uh and then you know so uh you can like so say i i'm hit with my right hand so i look at the ref i say right on three so now you got three windups on the third windup now you have to follow through with your slap on there and you're not allowed to touch him in between or else it's a foul oh, okay but does that mean you can go anywhere between one and three no, you got to go on the third. Okay, okay. But but you can choose two. You can choose one. Some people choose one. Um, some people choose two, and some people choose three. Okay. Got it. So and, and some people like to alternate. Like, say, say first round I go right, second round I go left, and that's not how it always goes, but I tried it, and my left's not really, you know, I don't feel like – I jerk off a lot with my right hand, so I feel like that's a better one. <laughs> right. There you go. You got a little more forearm strength there. <laughs> so yeah. – so I was watching that video clearly of you and that guy, and we can kind of see what happens there. But um, yeah. when you're, I mean, but even after that, they called me back. <laughs> well, well that's, I mean, that's not where I was going. I was going with how the hell do you, like you said, you can't prepare yourself, but 
Yeah. If I, I mean, know I'm about to be smacked and you have to hold on to that fucking noodle. And not flinch. <laughs> and not flinch. Yeah. That's a that's a whole different ball game. <laughs> Hey, bite down. <laughs> bite down. <laughs> bite down on that fucking mouthpiece and just get ready. Ugh. Hell yeah, man. So we mentioned that. So you're, the debut for Power Slap is tomorrow, right? Tomorrow night at, I believe, 10 o'clock on TBS right after AEW Wrestling. Right after AEW. Okay. okay. Got yeah. it. So I, mean, I know you can't give us, like, details on things, but is there a breakdown? Like, So you said 22 guys in this place. Yeah. Is it a tournament or what? What is uh, it? Basically, what it is is everybody's. Uh, it's all different weight classes, you know. So there's like, um, probably nine guys in the uh, middleweight. Um, there's like four guys in the heavyweight, you know. But it's all different weight classes, and everybody's going. We're at the end of this se- season. We will all be uh, world ranked in power slapping. Oh, okay. Wow. Sweet man. Yeah. So it's. It's like I said, you know, I w- like I said l- last year. Well, I guess two years ago, I guess I would have never thought myself being like world ranked in power slap, and now here I am, you know. Exactly. In the top 10. Hey, all thanks to uh, a baby mama's boyfriend. Yeah, fucking punk ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. And that's when I knew I could smack. <laughs> yeah, and you, you know the best part about it was she like. He, he didn't do, like, nothing, you know, and she, like, had to fight his battle for him. So, you know, she gave me a couple of good whacks, which kudos to her. And, you know, hey, she, I always knew she was about it, chick, but it is what it is, you know. That's right. right. The timing was just perfect, right? Then yeah, you see this yeah, slap thing, you're like, what the hell? Fuck it. Let's try it, right? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like fuck it. Let's roll with this. Hey. And so I told everybody, I said, look, when I come back, I want all you guys to refer to me as slap daddy. <laughs> slap daddy. <laughs> slap daddy. I'm digging it. That uh, but that kind of reminds me of like uh, anytime you talk about anything in general around your smartphone, and then the next time you open up Facebook, you start seeing ads for whatever you were talking about. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, like you go up there, you say you slap this dude up, and all of a sudden, like you start seeing <laughs> your phone must have heard a slap or something like that, and all of a sudden yeah, it started bringing up like this fucking. That... Go ahead. Yeah, it's on that looking for fighters uh, Facebook page, and Sal was like. Looking for uh, people to try new co- tryouts for a new combat sport, you know, put on by the UFC. And I'm like, well, fuck it, you know. Like, hey, I love, I love. There's no better violence than controlled violence, you know. Right. Yeah. So man. I was like, let me fucking give this a whirl, and who knows? Like I said, how many? Uh, I would never thought. How many more do you have uh, coming up here soon? Uh, well, um, I don't know. Uh, they got a pay-per-view coming in March, which will be, um, I don't know if you guys heard of this, uh, Slap Fight Championships. Okay. They're based out of Missouri, uh, you know, and that's where our coaches are out of. Uh, Darius, the Destroyer, and uh, fuck, I forgot his name, but the Wolverine is the other coach. So, um, they're last, and they're I think they're going to be, like, the head of the pay-per-view, like, the main main event for the pay-per-view. And like I said, I think I don't know, and I'm just speculating here. Um, but they got uh, Slap Fight Championships has an event in the end of February down in Oklahoma at the Choctaw Casino. So a lot of us Power Slap guys are gonna go down there and check it out, and you know. So shout out to JT Tilly for uh, hooking us up with that. So, so you're going down to Oklahoma then at that point to yeah, make sure uh, you stay fresh with it. To just watch, to, just to watch it, you know, because. Like I said, when when we went up to this, we were in our locker room and wasn't like really allowed to watch them. Yep. And in March, we weren't allowed to watch none of them. We had to like wait for the people to come back to the hotel room and tell us what happened. Oh, okay. So I'm excited to like see what happened to like the other people you know before me. Grant, you know some of us knew, and like I said, there's a lot of excitement. There's a couple of people I want to fight from the house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, hopefully in March it happens. Uh, I say you motherfuckers who the real 185 or is bitch. So <laughs> I like it. So you got to live in like uh, what would they call that show? Uh, like tough. No, the U.S. Yeah, the it's, Ultimate it's Fighter. Basically like t- yeah, basically like the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, yeah, there you go. So it was you know fucking house, nice house. Like I think they said like a 14. So uh, you, if you could 14,000 square foot, four million dollar mansion in uh, Henderson, Nevada. 
So if you weren't Jesus. smoking weed, I hope we get to see a good video of you drunk tearing up the oh, place. Dude, I, I was drinking every fucking night. Dollar <laughs> <laughs> head, man. Give me that fucking sponsor. Yeah, <laughs> right. No doubt, man. Absolutely. Well, you can uh, really, you know, after this comes out, you, there's uh, six episodes in the season or how many? Eight episodes. Eight. Eight. Episodes. eight. Okay. So after this every comes Wednesday. out, you can really see yourself as like a pioneer in this deal, man. That's yeah, pretty cool. The OGs. There we go. Hell yeah, man. Well, John, we'll uh, get ready to let you go here, but remind us tomorrow night after AEW, what channel are we talking? Uh, TBS. TBS. Every Wednesday yeah. for eight episodes, ladies eight, and gentlemen. Every Wednesday for eight episodes. And then in March, uh, there'll be a pay per view. Hell there we yeah. Go. Let's go, man. Hey, can I get a second to shout out to my sponsors real quick? Absolutely. Do it, man. All right. Uh, let me get a shout out to Mary Brown from Studio 65 Tattoos, um, Sean Hicks from A Plus Roof and Side, um, Anthony Green from AT Construction, Dino Caccino, uh from Dino's Concrete, Dad's House of Texas for helping dads be dads. They uh, helped me get my. Uh, basically, uh, we went to court for my son. You know, me and his mom and. Uh, you know, no lawyer. I went through no lawyer. Just basically, they gave me all the advice I could, and I told them I said I got you guys back forever. So, um, yeah. And uh, Brandon Tarantas from Howler's Bar and Grill. Shout out to my mom for keeping uh, Grace while I was out in Vegas. So, appreciate you guys. Uh, absolutely, my man. Hey, it was a pleasure talking to you, John. Uh, like always, uh, you get, get, got me laughing for sure. And yeah, then. Uh, and then uh, can't look, can't wait to watch a little bit of uh, Power Slap tomorrow Power night. Slap. Tomorrow Let's night, baby. Good. ABC. Miles, parting words, brother. Let's go smack some bitches up. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, man. Hey, John, it's always a pleasure, brother. We'll uh, podcast will be TBS. In- hey, and it's TBS, not ABC. T- oh, did I say ABC? You My bad. ABC. TBS. TBS. Yep, you're right. TBS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Clarity. Yeah, hey, TBS. Are you trying to get smacked? This. Are Don't want to get, get smacked. smacked. Don't <laughs> want to get smacked tonight, man. <laughs> yeah, tune in. Hey, yeah. like I said, if you like the Ultimate Fighter, you're like this. One of the guys that was on the Ultimate Fighter, uh, Mitch from the last season Ultimate Fighter, he was on there too. Uh, he's on the slap. Okay. Hell yeah. So, there we go. Let's tune go, in. man. Tune in for sure, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, John. Whoa, it was a pleasure, whoa, brother. We're whoa, excited whoa, to see whoa, it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? What are we doing? I can ask. No. You're not going to do it? <laughs> no. Hey, we can cut it out if he... If, what up? John, ask, John ask we're going to say something, but we, we'll cut it out if you don't like it. <laughs> what up? James, so this is James. When, when you showed up to the house, right, and they and you yeah. got and you got signed to do all this, like when they when you're going through like the HR part of this, and like the instruction video, did they show you the one of Dana White slapping his wife? No, that was afterwards, man. <laughs> so you know this was supposed to tune in. It was supposed to be January 11th. Was oh premiere. yeah, duh. And they canceled the fucking thing like right afterwards. So <laughs> it was canceled, taken off TBS's like TV guide and everything else. Oh. And so you know all the guys are like, dude, we're about to do. You guys are Dana White. You fucked up our goddamn fucking rise to fame. Right. You couldn't control your alcohol. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Dana yeah. Hallerhead. Uh, yeah, I, I forgot. I, didn't, I was going to ask that part too. Like how much, like what you guys were all thinking, like after that fucking went, and then you seen it start getting delayed. You're like, what yeah, the because, fuck because is going like on? Said, yeah, because there was like a prison. Like he, like he described that prison type melee brawl in the house. So. uh <laughs> yes. <Jesus. laughs> Let's yeah. go. Everybody's pissed. See, Man. here's the deal. That was a perfect promo for fucking power slap. I just, you know, yeah, that clip, right? It could have just used it, but they got scared, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you know, like next main event will probably be Dana White and his wife. Right. <laughs> the, rematch. the rematch. The rematch, baby. Here, here, Dana White sends these guys to a house with no weed, and he's out here getting drunk, smacking yeah, people. Yeah, told us. You know, he told us like, cause you know, that day, the next day they canceled our practice, and like we had to go to Apex, and Dana wanted like to have one of them talks with us. He's like. You guys need to learn to control your alcohol. You guys get paid to do this shit. And after I see this, I'm thinking to myself, like, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like, God damn it. 
You know, it's almost like yeah. look. It's almost yeah. like your kid looking at you. Like after you tell them not to do something, you're doing that damn thing, and they right, yeah, exactly. You know what exactly. I mean? And then your kid even calls you out. Like, why are you doing it then, <laughs> motherfucker? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it's like. <laughs> These guys got all horned up in a house. He's out here smacking bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least we fucking beat up dudes. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, man. <laughs> well, yeah. One more shout out, man. Shout out to Mike Estes, man. Uh, I know he had a lot to do with like my coming up and. Uh, keep me busy and shit. Keep me active and in shape for this shit. So, hell Absolutely. yeah, brother. You know, speaking of that, we are, we hope we get to see you up here next year. Yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, man. I, I think he says next show is June, and my birthday's in June. So, hopefully, we can figure something out. There we hell go. Yeah, man, sounds good. I, I mean, I'm not under no contract that I can't fight MMA. So, we'll hey, see what happens? There hey, you know what? Based on those videos, I might rather do MMA than some of that. Some of the videos I've seen <laughs> yeah. of that power slap, brother. Yeah. So I don't blame oh, you. Yeah, man. All right, John, we'll let you go, brother. Have a good night, all right? All right, man, appreciate it. All right. God bless you guys. You Thank too. You. That, I didn't know where that was going to go. I was a little worried he'd be like. Because he, <laughs> he brought up Dana like in a positive way like during that, so I was going to leave it be. Because, Miles, you told me to leave it be. I did. You told me to leave I it did. be last night. I did, but it's John, man. He's going to. He's. I, I, if as he, soon as he. I know where exactly where you felt like it. As soon as you said I got to slap the shit out of my baby mama's boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, all right, we going to ask him. <laughs> Good call. I had no idea where you were going. I forgot he had that question in his back pocket. Yeah, yeah but I mean, we doing? it's John. He would have either made it. He would be like, hey, guys, let's not put that in. And then I just cried for literally three minutes. <laughs> like, like, could you imagine that? Fucking what? Uh, Dana White. Dana White comes up to all these guys. Yeah, this drinking and bullshit and fighting in this house is bullshit. Dana, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, yeah. how how can you preach to us and you out here smacking women? Yeah, it's the same thing he says to his fighters, though. Like, domestic. You cannot be a fighter if you've mm -hmm. got domestics, and then he does that. So he's all around, man, looking like a hypocrite. You can't change the culture if you're the culture. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. No doubt, man. Unless you pull yourself out, right? Yep. There you go. All right, Jimmer, it's time to kick this bad boy off. What's up out there, man? Uh, we have mind blowing that shit that happened in the NFL, obviously over the weekend. We're gonna go ahead and start with one that I found that was kind of comical, okay? And that is that the Chargers fired their offensive coordinator Joe Lombardi after thirty-one to thirty playoff collapse against the Jags, uh, where they were where they held a twenty-seven to zero lead. T Law, baby. T Law. T Law. T Law. That's with Trevor Lawrence fronting them four interceptions to come back and end up throwing four touchdowns. Didn't yeah. see this happening. Cute thing. Couple cute things. Evidently, was it? Uh, it wasn't Phil. Who was it? Who was the golfer? Phil Mick. Uh, no. The golfer, Phil Mickelson. It wasn't Phil Mickelson. It was um, oh, it was a legendary uh, one. It's placed the other, a one. It's the other one. It's the other one. Placed a one point two million dollar bet when they were up twenty one to twenty one to Biff. Oh yeah, who did? Make Rory. That bet? No, it was the old. It was a legend. Not John Daly, right? No, the legend, legend, like like the goat. Wow. Nicholas Jack, Jack Nicholas. Nicholas. There you go. Yeah. That's an actor. <laughs> <laughs> but the more specific one was a dude that. Bet over was one point four million dollars when they were up twenty seven to zero to make a whopping eleven or fourteen thousand dollars somewhere that in much. that ballpark yeah. and lost it. Lost it. I oh. find that very funny. I do too. Like why? Uh, what's there's no juice there. That's all risk. Like there's nothing positive. Eleven grand for one point four million. I think it, maybe it's fourteen. It was minuscule. Compared to what he bet, it was nothing right. that he was yeah, get. dropping yeah. the bucket, right? 12500 or something like that. That was wow. like... Let me tell you guys... So what little... does this tell you, though? What it, what does what it tell me? <sighs> they're going to keep him. Off, keep who? Offensive coordinator got fired. That's why I was Yeah, they're going to keep him. He calls... Doesn't he call the... He calls the defensive plays. He doesn't call the offensive plays. No, they say... So if you know anything about the NFL, whenever you see this happen, especially pretty quickly, it is a last-ditch effort to save your own job. It is to pu push the blame off on somebody else. Hey, we'll get it correct. This was it, and we'll get it corrected. When it really should be him that is fired. No. Yes. Tell me why not. He's a, he's a third year, second year coach. Bad argument right now. I don't care that's a bad argument. You don't start. <laughs> you know why it's a bad argument? 
because of what he did last year to get his nope. team out of the playoffs? Nope. Who they just fired two hours after they lost the season finale. I don't know. Lovey Smith after one year. <sighs> it happens all the time. It happens all the time. How many times has Lovey Smith been a head coach? Uh, Steve, Steve Wilkes got fired after one year of a rebuild year to give it to Cliff Kingsbury, who's now in Thailand, by the way, on a one-way ticket and is answering phone calls. In Bangkok. <laughs> you, you lose Bangkok. It in Bangkok. Yeah. And he's still getting paid. <clears throat> yeah, he's yeah, still. For five years. Yep. Well, he's doing okay. can we go back to that? Go, go back to my original thing. Yeah, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, you yeah. said, so, you know, they came back from 27 nothing, right? Yep. Never let your friends play Vegas. Never. Keep going. So, Miles here likes to bet the underdogs, right? And uh, everybody was pretty certain the Colts had this under wraps. And Colts? The Chargers? Oh, yeah, Chargers. Same team. Anyways, <laughs> they both blew big leads. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, I, uh, I was like, hey, because, you know, I deleted... Fan duel because of my gambling issues, but that day I hit seventy two hundred dollars at the casino and I was about to drop it all, not all of it, understatement. But hit seventy two hundred dollars at the casino, could have dropped maybe four or five without blinking. God, that on the when under. You say shit like that on the, the on, on the money line, on the money line of comeback, the Jaguars. Down twenty seven nothing. And what was the odds? It wasn't it was like plus twenty seven hundred or something like Twi- that. No, it was like twelve thousand. That's the that's what I was trying to say. It plus, was like twelve thousand five hundred. I think I, I got him at. Was it? I got him at twelve thousand. Twelve thousand fifty. But then you wait got, twelve thousand five hundred. Are you sure it wasn't twelve fifty? I got it at twelve fifty. Maybe it's twelve. So it's for every hundred dollars you would have got a thousand. Twelve hundred bucks. Yeah, twelve hundred bucks. Okay. But it's but now if you think back to the Vikings game, they were plus four thousand at halftime down what? Thirty thirty three. Thirty three. <clears throat> so it's the fact that it was the Chargers, I guess, that the odds weren't that good. Because usually that lopsided of a I game. I think they've lost enough like in the, when it comes to that. Yeah, probably. you're going like to see. This year, the mass comebacks has been. You're going to yeah. see plus. You should usually see plus 3,000 on something like that. But anyways, uh, I went to fork over some money and have my buddy place the bet. And both of them, <clears throat> we want it. We want it. I'm like, all right. Well, at the end of the night, I'm sitting good. You know what I'm saying? But what do you mean? But I don't, I they, did, like they, they, they didn't give you twelve hundred odds. No, uh, I only put ten on it with Luke. He covered so his. ten to one. Oh, he, okay, he covered his bet. So ten to one. Well, ten to one would have been thousand. That's, that's where I'm. That's where I'm getting ready to go. So I did. Oh yeah, ten to one with Luke. So it would have been a hundred bucks, not a thousand. Yep. For ten bucks. Yep. Me and Tyler went a hundred and one. At a hundred to one. Yeah. Or at ten to one, I mean, at ten to one, if, and he bet a hundred. If if that's how it works, yes. Cause so I, he bet a hundred. He, you were betting a hundred with him. Is that what you're saying? See this. So I, I'm going to be dead serious with you. There, there was a three hour argument about this because I just said, "Here's the bet. I'm giving you ten. If they don't win, you're giving me a hundred. Yep. That's right? ten to one odds. Yep. But when we shook. He goes, shit. I'm like, what? I I owe you a thousand. No. I know. So I think if it, if it, if it was that. ten to one, if it was ten to one and you only bet a ten dollars with him, yeah. he owes you a hundred. Okay. Yep. Because I didn't do okay. So a hundred to one is a thousand. Yes. If you bet the ten. Yeah. Thank you. That's all I needed to know. Yep. Sorry, there there's your uh logistics today, people. <laughs> right. Uh but anyways, as I was saying. It's a, it's a year of the comeback. Mm-hmm. Um, so the NCAA tournament run, uh, rolls around. FanDuel's going back on my phone. Let's go Loyola, Michigan. <laughs> okay. Loyola, Chicago, Chicago. Whatever one. Close enough. Close enough. So bad, but we went deviated. So we're talking about we're talking <laughs> about literally this though. So this is a last ditch effort. Yeah. Obviously. Looks like he's gonna keep his job now. To you? For now. There's other things that still could be happening behind the scenes. 
but it seems that way right now because there's a really, really big fish out there that if he were to have any interest, if they did sneakily pull him in and talk to him, if he indicated he'd come, the old boy would be fucking gone. I think they would, though, already because he – Do you? I don't know if you saw this. He sat down with the Texans already. Yeah, he's talked to Carolina – Texans, Denver and the Texans, Denver. I think. Yep. Yeah, and then he's doing a. Two- I didn't see Texans on that. Like he, I didn't know if he'd entertain that. He's doing a one-way trip to uh, L.A. He's meeting two. He's meeting two teams in L.A. Yeah, I think that's Carolina and Denver. Okay. I think those are the two that were left. I, I guess I shouldn't say he has done them. He those are like in his. But to upcoming. be honest with you, I think when I was reading it, it was for the Chargers also. I didn't hear that. I, I didn't hear that. And yeah. as far as I know, they I don't know if you can you can you talk to him if I mean, why would you, you have a coach under fire contract your head coach if you don't know if you're getting this one or not? Maybe that maybe you are allowed to. It's a little different than like players. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I, they can. I read they something. have to ask permission, though. They have to add just those other those three teams prior, not the Chargers, the other three yep. teams. They did. And you have to ask permission to the Saints to interview them. Yep. Which they obviously are granting, but they're letting you know that this is what it's going to cost to get him. Yeah, it's going to be a first. Yeah, no matter what. So it was it was interesting though when you heard like Carolina and oh. Houston. You're like, of all the spots, <clears throat> but I don't know. So I thought I thought two things on that. I really did. So let's assume that the Chargers doesn't happen. I know it's a dream thing. I think it might, you know. And the Denver is probably more appealing with everything already in place, basically, you know. But the more I thought about this, I'm telling you, Sean Payton is a guy that wants to have full control of everything. He didn't have absolute control with the Saints, but he was pretty damn was close. Damn close. He was damn yeah. close. But this is different. The Texans already showed that they have and will do it. They did it with Bill O'Brien. He was a GM. He was the judge jury and executioner of everything in there. I'm telling you, it's little more than just a dark horse for Texans. Cause he, they get the, he what does, they get the number Texas one is home too. Right. Right. So. Right. They get the number two pick. He gets to pick his quarterback. I understand it's a young one. I get it, but he can roll with some. And then he has some nice bright pieces on defense. Right. I mean, he has a tradable asset that he won't, he has no bashfulness about it. He would trade Brandon Cooks. He would please him with that, and he would get something in return so that he can build on to what he's doing. I'm not kicking the Texans out of this. I'm really not. It's a good point. The, the Panthers, I don't know where they would sit and like letting him like run the show. They have a lot of intriguing pieces, too. They really do. Their defense, they have so many offensive weapons. It's whether you believe in Sam Darnold, and if you don't, then you're then you get to then you're gonna end up picking it's a it's a quarterback heavy draft. I'm not really I think a lot of the mock drafts are showing them taking Levis. He's kind of like this wild horse that's all over. I'm looking at mock drafts already, right? Yeah. And then he's all over the first round. Anywhere from, like, number two all the way down to, like, 15, right? But a lot of them that I'm seeing are coming across, like, Carolina, 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 right? So there he'd be able to pick his quarterback, not the one necessarily they 100% want, but I don't know. It's intriguing. The Texans one is a proven one where they have shown we just want to win. We'll hand you whatever you want. That's why I'm like, maybe it's not quite as dark horse as what we think, especially if the Chargers aren't going to fire their head coach. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I don't – it's hard to say, man. Because obviously, like, if you want the pieces that are there, Denver makes the most sense. You just got to figure out Russ, right? But you're you're right. He's probably going to want, you know, that Gruden contract, 10 years, 100 mil, control of everything, basically. Mm Mm-hmm. And the Texans would be willing to do that. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I can't argue with you, brother. See, with the Texans, though, with the number two pick, they would have to swing a defense. I think they have another first-round pick. I think they have two first-round picks this year. So they wouldn't even have to give up their number two pick. Who just lost their head coach and their GM? The Cardinals? Yes. yes. You could get uh, one higher and two spots filled. Well, it's... Um... Yeah, good. Yeah, I don't know if he depends. wants Kyler though. Yeah, it depends on what he's willing to deal with. Yeah, D- yeah, Drew Brees is a very respectable person. Like he didn't, he would not argue with Sean Payton. Kyler looks like a spoiled brat, right? Yeah. I mean, at least from the outside looking in, it looks like it. Yeah. To me, I don't think he wants any part of that. Yeah, Arizona's a mess. I'm not sure about that. 
I get what you're. Your, your I see. I see sound. what you're doing. Yeah. Like the mind. I, I the mind. The thought process. I just want to see real quick, and then I'll move on to the next one. I want to see. I'm pretty certain. They had two first round picks. If they do, that ba- that makes even more sense. I don't know if they do though. I thought they owned one later. Who? Did? Who? Houston. They probably have. They do. They yeah. own the twelfth overall pick also from the, they Cle- the from, too? from Cleveland. Yeah. So they would have to just give up the twelfth. Or maybe they could talk the Saints into being like, Hey, we'll give you next year's first rounder and then they can keep their two first rounders this year that are pretty damn close to each other, ten picks apart, in the upper half of the first round. I'm I'm actually selling myself on this. I believe that he's yeah, going man. to be the Texans next head coach. Damn. Yeah. I, I couldn't argue, brother. Uh, yeah. Anything else? No. Oh, okay, I, you're I, kind of mumbling over I there. don't like it. <laughs> you don't like it, but... It, no. I, He's not going to go to Texas. That, that Texas. That side. They just, We'll get to that, but they just won, so it's going to be real hard to let the other one go. McCarthy? Yeah. <laughs> if he keeps winning? He keeps winning? It counts as his record, the coach's record. That defense is winning, and he's not the defensive actually, coordinator. Actually, Dak kind of won that, too, last uh, night. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Say let's get want. in. Let's get into where I'm going to cry. We're going to get a little sad. Get a little sad. Giants win 31-24 to behind an awesome performance from Daniel Jones and a poor Vikings defense. Terrible. Womp, womp, womp. Here's what I'm excited about. I'm not going to dwell on that because uh, this is the life we live as Vikings fans. Mm. I think Dable opens something up that he hasn't done all year with that team. I think they're going to be a problem for Philly next weekend. I think so, too. Now, where I'm going to be skeptical is like they, what, they averaged, oh, what was it, 30, 30 something points two of the last three games that they've played. Two of the last three games they played were against the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, yeah. So Danny Dimes isn't going to throw for 300 yards again, right? But, but he was but in the money, though. Going into Philly, he might be the more mobile quarterback because we don't know how healthy Hurts is yet. Right. Right? And, and that's a problem for anybody. And so they might be able to give them a little bit of their own medicine. Um, if they stick to that game plan, what they did against us, that's going to be hard to stop. It really is because yeah. you went true threat. Of what just everybody else does, like uh, that is in that same category. A Kyler, a Kyler Murray led team, a, a younger Russ led team, uh, Jalen Hurts led team, one that can actually take off. Now you have to, you only can go one on one with your receivers because you have to keep those guys up front and being honest because if he takes off, and that's exactly what they did. They he chewed us up and spit us out. Yeah, he did. He really did, and he was uh, Danny Dimes. The the nickname actually goes perfect for this game because he didn't miss. Yeah, was there was great. there were shots on the money, money shots, <laughs> money shots. Yeah, sad game though. It's too bad. The I already know what they need to do. I'm going to ask you what you think they should do. What are the Vikings' priorities? What, in my opinion, they weren't supposed to be here this year anyway. I like it was awesome. We're playing with house money. We were supposed to have 13 wins. I thought we were going to be around that 10. Yep, you know, eight to whatever. That's what I thought. Somewhere in the eight to whatever range, right? Because mm-hmm. the defense I didn't know, and obviously it showed to be really bad. So what is uh, where do you go first? And mind you, we only have. Like five draft picks, a first, a third, and some late rounds. Go ahead. You're not going to need them. <clears throat> OBJ is going to come to the Vikings now. <clears throat> um, you're going to get rid of one of your running backs. Uh, it's going to have to be Cooks. Cook. So you're going to you're going to gain something out of that. Probably could trade that for a first rounder, honestly. Um, then use that for the defensive side of the ball. Um, you'll probably trade back if you do get a first round pick. You'll trade back, and then you'll be able to beefen up the line a little bit because of your injury. <laughs> Just get some guys in there when <clears throat> the seniors are done. 
And then you're going to need a linebacker and a cornerback. I don't know if you will and deal Cooks on that, but Thielen's gone. But OBJ will take care of that. And then you're going to have the best wide receiver corpse with the tight end. You're, I, like, I, I like your assessment. You're pretty damn close to everything I was going to say. A little, I'll, I'll I'll end up giving a little bit more, but actually, you're me and you were on the same page. Actually, what you got? Defense, we've got some pieces we need to get. I it wasn't as I think if everybody was healthy, that defense wouldn't have been nearly as bad. We had some young guys that were hurt most of the that, year that we were playing. Very on talented, playing. Yeah. yeah. So that's a big deal. Those guys get healthy, and we fill in another piece or two. With some more experience, like some guys that are hungry and are solid. Mm -hmm. But that O-line needs to get shored up. And we have to figure out a way, like, to... So maybe it's adding another piece like OBJ. That would be sweet. But when they're triple covering Justin Jefferson, we it's like we can't do anything. Right. So... Uh, well, yes. But I was going to say, oh, no. boy, had a game, though. Hawkinson had a game. They couldn't yeah. stop him. He had over 100 yeah. yards and 10 catches again. But I, I know what you're. Yeah. I do know what if somebody's, you mean. if somebody's getting triple teamed, somebody's open. Yeah, if we don't take advantage of that enough, and that right. really happened, especially late in the season, the last like four games. <laughs> yep. was really rough for him. So the the defense is the biggest deal. We got to shore up the protection for Kirk. Um, I got maybe one more piece. But I got our, I got one more. I got one question though. So I didn't watch much of the game. Did uh did you guys run very many screenplays? You run the tight end screen. We, we ran you? a few, actually, and anything. actually it was not successful at all. Oh, okay, okay. It was really bad when we did. Like, he got blown up for, like, negative four yards. Okay. I do remember. Well, I The reason why I know that, I distinctly remember one of them because my son yelled at the TV. He's like, why? It hasn't worked all game. Why in the hell are you running a screen? It was late in the game, too. Okay. Like, where we need to be going, you know? We just need to give Bigger the boot, too. He's pissing me off. I'm done with it. It drops a lot yeah. of balls. Still. Way too Jesus. Many. Well, they said it's because of the offense. That's what uh, – not him. That was from other people because he, he hasn't grasped this offense yet. So now he's just thinking. He's thinking instead of reacting and playing with smooth motion. Not defending him. Just saying what kind of what that's coming yeah. across. What do you got, though? So I'm going to run down a few things. I'm going to say something that is going to hurt a lot of Vikings fans' feelings, including my own because I'm a I heard Viking fan. And when you have – favorites, maybe even like lifetime Viking favorite players. It's really hard to say shit like this, but Adam Thielen will be gone, should be gone. His wife already posted on Instagram that they believe it too. Uh, he carries a not, almost a $20 million cap hit for this next year. So unless something gets worked out to where it gets chopped down to like nothing almost, cut and then re-signed to something way cheaper, he's gone. And he needs to be because he's not the same. No. Uh, you can see it when you're watching the game. Uh, the next one, Dalvin Cook for the $14 million cap hit. You either need to get that down or you unfortunately would have to let him go and you have to re-sign Alexander Madison, which should be, should be a little bit cheaper all around anyways. I mean, even if it was like buck for buck, it would still be cheaper. Now, Dalvin is under contract, like he said, so you could swing a trade. If you have somebody that is in, look what McCaffrey brought in. I don't think he can bring that in because he has an injury history. McCaffrey does too. So I know that sounds, I, I know what that means, but I don't know if he's a trade. We'll just leave it at that. He's a trade asset. And Hopefully they're not the same back. player, man. Delvin's not the same. No, and he's lost He's lost a half step. Yeah. He's still quick as shit. He's still fast. He's still, but the pull away isn't quite there. Like he made some that shouldn't have been close at all like he usually you would spring shot and be gone yeah and they got a little close he ended up getting a touchdown or whatever and a couple of them like that but um but the ones that are gonna hurt me saying is number one eric kendrick has got to go i don't know if you know this danny but he leads the vikings in missed tackles mike zimmer would lose his shit sleep kill somebody of all the missed tackles we had in general as a, as a Viking defense. But when you're a seasoned vet who has been a pro bowler and one of the best tight end, or sorry, best linebackers in the game, middle linebackers, 
if you remember any of these plays this year, he was missing two steps. It was bad. He was not in where he's supposed to be. Jordan Hicks needs to go to. We actually need a new linebacking core. So that's the reason why I'm going to differentiate from what you're saying. We need a new linebacking core. Jordan Hicks was horrible. He's had one of the worst PFFs against him in coverage all season long. Eric Hendricks, like I said, has to go. And that sucks because he's one of my favorites too, right? Yeah. But that, that we've crossed that line where we held him a year too long. Yeah. Right? We let Anthony Barr go, but we kept Kendricks too long. And the one that's going to hurt the most, me saying, Danny. Harrison Smith? Yes. Yeah, I'm with you on that. That one hurts a lot for me to say. I own his jersey. He's one of my favorite players. He is nowhere near the same player. He has lost the two steps, like I said, easily. He's no more. Go back to his rookie season, watch his highlights. The speed was there. It's not there. It's gone. It's 100% gone. Now he's missing tackles because he's thinking about his head because he's taking a lot of concussion damage. So he missed uh, He missed this week. He missed a few last week, but he missed a clear-cut blitz. Big one, yeah. You remember seeing that yeah. too, right? I'm sorry. Time to go. Like, if we're being serious, all this stuff is painful stuff. We're at a crossroads where we're about to cut fan favorites. This has to happen. All those happen, and that trade with the Dalvin Cook will have a mass amount of cap space. Believe it or not, Kirk Cousins only carries a $36 million cap hit, which actually is not very high. When you look across the league, four, yeah. four million below league average. Yeah, so that's not bad. We can't blame it on Kirk Cousins for this year's, this next year's cap. Uh, could I say something about the linebacker? Which one? Uh, your which Kendricks? Line, which linebacker were you talking about? Was it Kendricks? I, I talked about both. I, a little bit about Jordan Hicks and which one? Kendricks had the worst uh, PFF. Uh, Jordan Hicks. Okay, so the defense they run, <clears throat> that's very hard on a linebacker when you're already six yards back playing the pass. Absolutely. He's playing the pass. He has PFF grade on pass, pass no, coverage. No, I understand that. But you start letting teams be successful on the run, I'm creeping up. Right, but he was never in position. I'm not talking about just a PFF. No, I know. I'm yeah. just I'm just saying like that's a common theme across the board, though. He might be the worst, but it's the com it's a common theme against all defenses that run that. I, I do get that. Trust me okay. when I say this. He is horrendously bad. Though. Okay. Like that that's what I'm trying to say. The number one cut that needs to happen is the defense coordinator needs to go. That should have happened the day after. It should have happened four or five weeks ago to try to salvage a defense. How many times did you watch this during this game, Danny? I know one specifically. They end up ripping off like 15, 20 yards. They dropped our two best edge rushers into coverage. Oh, you were telling me about that. Yeah. That's been a regular theme. Yeah. So They're you supposed to be the fucking the sack brothers, right? You are dropping them in coverage. Daniel Hunter is not a coverage guy. He looks no. stiff as shit. I don't know if you've seen yeah. him do it. It looks yeah. bad. So yeah. you're going to you're going to So you have no pressure coming up at him and definitely not your most powerful so pass. So you're going 4-3 or 3-4 when they're doing this. Don't care. I really don't. No, no, I'm, I'm saying you don't care, but if you're going to drop two guys back when they're already getting that much in rushing yards, they're going to run it down th your throat. So 3 so a 3-4 and a 4-3 I think is an ugly excuse for anything. The yeah. reason why I say that is every 3-4 what is the outside linebacker doing? Yeah. Rushing every time. Still, you're running a four. Yeah, so I don't care what anyone okay, says. Okay, okay. The concept of everything else, if you want to say a concept into it is one thing, like the 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 secondary, the linebackers. But your outside linebacker, don't care what the hell you say. Outside linebacker, defense end, it's the same thing. They're unless, literally rushing every uh, time. Unless you're running a spy. Yes, ah. but but that's but that's a concept. I said a concept. Versus, I know, I know. Versus I know. the base defense. Base defense is you're running. No matter what they say, you're running four. Right. You're running four. No matter if you call it an outside linebacker or a defensive end. Oh yeah, definitely. So that's I don't care which way they go to. They need a more aggressive defense. They need to not be this bend don't break was like really really rough. And if it can work, if you want to keep it that way, I'm not even sold that you that it was necessarily bend don't break that was the problem. I think the personnel was not good. Especially the linebackers. You don't, they're not young. They're not spry. You didn't. We had a lot of injuries up front. We'd have a lot of injuries overall throughout the season. You know, we really didn't. But we did have them up front. We didn't have da Dalvin Tomlinson. We didn't have his backup. And then all we were ru rushing with is Harrison Phillips. Right. Right? So we have some things to change is what I'm getting at. I'm with you. I think we our secondary will automatically get a boost next year because these guys are going to come back. They got injured last the, during the very early part of this season. So I don't know if you need to spend it on a corner yet. Not a first round, especially. Yeah. 
And I think you need to focus on your linebackers. You need to figure out a way to get defensive tackles. There's a lot of defensive tackles on the open market that are going to hit that you should be able, a couple of them that you should be able to get for a decent price. But we have some money to toy with, so. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, <coughs> the personnel was an issue for sure. And you kind of go through some bumps and bruises, so go win in 13 games. That defense did come up clutch in a few games this yeah. year, specifically Patrick Peterson, yeah. right? But that's not always going to happen. Right. So you, that has to get shored up. So the fact that we let Danny Dimes look so good and that Giants offense look so good, I'm with you on the coordinator thing too. Like, bro, what? there was no adjustments made throughout the season. You know what no. this defense can and can't do. Right. Yeah. But you you guys have to do the miles on this now, right? What do you got? If your team gets beat in the playoffs, you're now cheering for that team, right? Like I, want- I, I borderline am. So I was a season ahead of my time. I called nine wins for this team. Yeah. What they end up with this year. And they're in the playoffs and they're seriously competitive. Everything I said last year, they had a lot of injuries last year too. Yeah. And they also didn't have Brian Dabble. So I just, I was kind of a, I was a little ahead of my time on that one, but I'm kind of am. I'm not really a giants guy, but definitely over the Eagles. That's for damn certain. So yeah, for that one, I'm ready for Super Bowl Sunday with the big American flag flying. Their coach up there with the 9-11 hat on. Let's go. Hey, man. Love that coach. Dude, that guy, does he does he not just remind you of somebody that you just left a bar with? Oh, for sure. Like, you could sit down and talk to that guy. And he, I don't know. Like, he's back there making us ribs and everything. You Who's know? that? Dable. Dable? Dable, however you say his Yeah, name. I'm on both sides of that fence because uh, I was getting pretty pissed that every time he would throw a fit and blow his gasket and his face was getting red at a ref, they would get a call. Oh, yeah. And then we wouldn't. There were so there is one thing calls. I got to put on ours. Yeah. I got to put this on air right fucking now because this one bugs me out of all of it, right? Our defense played bad. That was the reason why we lost. I will say that full heartedly, okay? That being said, this officiating, just as long as all the rest of the season – has been fucking horrendous. And this one more specifically was one of the touchdown passes that Danny Dimes threw, their left tackle was major false start. Started kicking back. So oh, yeah. even stopped yeah. thinking that they were going to blow the whistle. Is that bad? Yeah. And then he goes, throws his arms. They throw a touchdown pass. Yeah. Fast forward into this game. We're fourth and in inches. We clearly get it. We get a false start on Kristen Dershaw for his ass cheek flinching. <laughs> I heard that. Yeah. On, I heard that on TV. I did. You watched the yeah. game. You know what I'm yeah. talking about, right? Yeah. I mean, he barely. It wasn't like, he barely. It, it was, was just after. Yeah. Yeah. And it was after that. I'm like, are we fucking kidding? You let that go right there. That literally cost a touchdown. That made us kick a field goal too. So there's a 14 point swing right there. They got a touchdown off of that, off of them not calling one, and then they took our fourth and one where we got a first down with Kirk Cousins away. Backed us up. We kicked a field goal. Three points. Sorry, 11 point swing. Dude was clinching a fart. Now. I actually wasn't that upset after this game because, like I said, we were playing with house money. I'm like, we probably shouldn't have been there. I knew that defense would come back and nip us in the ass at some point. Kirk and them can only bail us out so much, right? But hey, by the way, real quick, Kirk's getting too much heat because of that last pass. He was about to get wrecked, right? He was, he or at least he was about to get sacked for sure. There was nowhere to go. You have to go where you can. I wish, like, I know there was a lot of guys on JJ, but like. Maybe the, you throw the ball up to him and hope he Lob can fucking it. come down with it. Yeah. yeah. But th- what else is he going to do? You know what I mean? That's, He's been great this year. I'm with he you. He really has. I'm with you, and he has been. I think the I think the play call should catch more heat. How in the fuck do you have your receiver not going, your play call not going to the first At down? At least to the first down, yeah. So it shouldn't have been Kirk Cousins' issue. You know, like the dude should have been at the first. I'm not saying it's Hawkinson. It was literally the play call. That's what the play call was. So if you have a play call and that dude isn't, and that play call doesn't get you to the first to the first down marker, that's the play call. I agree with you. At first I was pissed, but then I actually started realizing. I'm like, uh, hold on. He had nowhere else to go. Right. I mean, you could lob it somewhere, yeah. and then the game would be over, and he'd be pissed, and you'd blame him for an interception. Yeah. He was about to get wrecked. He got it to somebody hoping maybe he could break a tackle, and he was open. Yeah. It was the only guy that was. Yeah. Uh, on that last play, do you think that was a sideline out? I think it was a sideline hitch. The cornerback stepped in the way. So Hawkinson couldn't even finish his route, so he had. That's who he was banking on to be running, and you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I think it was a sideline hitch. He only had one guy on him. He uh, should have. Hawkinson should have went a little uh, provisional on that one. You know, a little, 
where he just actually turned it up feel as soon as he bit on this. Yep. Literally lob it up at that point because I turn my hips and I start going up feel, lob it up. I'm he's yeah. six foot seven. Yeah, he's you coming know? down with it. And if that if if that does happen, everybody else is on this side of the field. Right. He's gone. All due respect to Irv Smith, I do agree with you on that one. I don't know if I clearly made that. Like Irv Smith does need to go. Yeah. Because Kirk's going to throw it to the open guy, and he's fucking open every time. Yeah, he and then he drops it. The ball. He yeah. drops it 50% of the time minimum. Garrett Bradbury, I'm interested about that one. They never, they didn't give him a fifth-year option. He is technically a free agent. I don't know if they're going to bring him back. Yeah, that's – you're right. I'm not sure. I, I think so. I think you have to. I looked at the center market. <laughs> you kind of have to. Hopefully you get a discount because he wasn't really, really good or anything. He was just serviceable. Solid, yeah. Yep. So if you have OBJ and uh, uh, Justin Jefferson, is K is KJ Osborne bigger than both of them? Bigger. Yeah. Like, is he gonna like? Would he be your Mike Williams? No. Oh. No. 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 He's like the same height as JJ. He's like six one, six foot. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a little. Tall. He's a little meatier. Like, I feel like he's a little tougher, but he's not. Yeah. Yeah, he's not super tall, though. No. I think he's, I think his, I don't want the Vikings to slip up on this one. I don't want them to think that KJ is an automatic number two. I think he has some more to grow into. I think he's a perfect number three that you don't expect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe it is. I could be a thousand percent wrong. Maybe he's ready for the next step and he can be the clear cut number two here. And you got it on a discount, but. There's a lot of moving parts that are going to happen. I'm really interested for us, for our for our team in the offseason. It'll be interesting to see what all does happen. Yeah, I agree. Especially man. with the draft picks, and we don't have that many of them, you know? Yep. Uh, the Bills win a surprisingly close game over the Dolphins, 34-31. to 31. You're going to see a lot of 31s here. Scripted? I wonder. <laughs> or, the, but or the fact what, that they won by three. This score is not indicative of the stats. But your thoughts on the Bills and the Dolphins? Yeah, just real quick, uh, a lot of credit to um, the Dolphins coach, man. The fact that he kept them in the game. For vaping on the sideline? Did you see that video? Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm not surprised, I guess, at that either. No, is he really, he's though? Kid. Yes. He, like, tries to go like this. It's almost like he's doing the Drax thing from Guardians of the Galaxy. You can't see me while he's eating a chip. And he watches it go like this. You literally watch him go... And then the camera pans away because they know what they're about to show. Yeah. Yeah. Let's but go. go. Ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So credit to them for a rookie quarterback and being that close. Bill's defense didn't look great. And Josh Allen is really reminding me more and more. I really, I'm a, the biggest Josh Allen fan, yep. but he's reminding me more, more of Brett Favre every day. He doesn't give a shit. He takes he's a, chucking the ball up and un, he's hoping unnecess- this guy. Unnecessary yes, risk. A lot of too, times. Right? Yeah. Yep. So mine. Mine is is that you go look at the stats on this. Their defense didn't play bad, the Bills, but they didn't play good. You go and look at it; it's not. It's, it, I think the Dolphins had a whopping 250 yards of total offense. They only. I think the rookie quarterback only had 200 yards uh, passing. I think they only had like 43 yards on the ground combined. This was purely the Bills and your guy, Josh Allen, my guy too. I like him too, so I shouldn't say that, but. He literally kept them in this game. So every interception that was happening and fumble was literally putting them in field goal range. So they were able to kick a field goal. If you kick a field goal, it's – and then they had the fumble return for a touchdown. Um, and then a couple touchdowns from the offense itself, uh, one pass, one rush. Because I was wondering – I was like, how in the hell did they get all the points if you're looking at the offensive stats, right? Short field position. Short, short field path. position. So yeah. they kept – they shot themselves. This was – but it's a bad draw too. It's a bad. You don't have your. You don't have your stud star quarterback. You don't have your backup quarterback who's more than serviceable. You're down to a third string, six round draft pick. Not set. No shot at him. But this is not the time to be playing the Bills, who are a Super Bowl favorite, and they have destiny on their side too with a with a Hamlin injury. Right. Yeah. Agreed, man. What do you think? Destiny was made to be broken, baby. Oh, that was her name. <laughs> That was her name? Yeah. Oh, okay. She was at a college town on a strip floor. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that the Bills are not winning it. I think. Uh, so this concerned you a little bit then? Or opened your eyes? I more? really wanted the Dolphins to win this um, for a lot of reasons. One, especially at Von Miller. Uh, two, he is as good as we think he is, though. Uh, 
shit. Tua? Yeah. Tua. I don't. I, I don't yeah. know if you guys understand. Like, if Tua could have played and they lost that game, that really might have been his last game. I don't I don't think he's one more hit away from being his last game regardless. Man. That, that that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Like I th- I think if he could have played this game and you know rode it out to Super Bowl or whatever, I think two his days are numbered. Um the Dolphins they're going to be tough for a while. I don't know where I'm going with this. They have <laughs> they have growth. Let me let me let me uh tie up your loose ends. Okay, here. thank you. They are going to be tough in the future. I think they. I'm more sold on Tua than Danny is. I think he still has a little bit of lefty, and he and the dude short. He has, he hates short quarterbacks. But I think uh, they would have been they would have been a lot better off. But we pointed this out, and he's like, you yeah. know what? Actually, this looks really fucked up. But yeah, but I think Tua is the guy. His unfortunately, his body is going to fail him because of his size. He gets thrown. He gets touched. He gets flung. He gets head. You know what I'm saying? He gets his head slammed. This game would have been different. Because when you if you give that same short field position to him and his and his timing with his receivers, this game would have been way different. That's also where like it makes me draw backs. I, I I was thinking slam dunk Bills. I don't know if it's slam dunk because I don't know if they can play air free football. Remember that stat I told you about them clearly leading the like by far leading the league in turnover percentage of drives. Yeah, of their drives. Wow. How many end up in it? It was like 15, 18% or some mm-hmm. shit like yeah, that. Yeah, I remember that. It's a ridiculous stat for somebody that is a Super Bowl contender. A lot of, if Josh Allen can stop, pump the brakes, and learn to do a little bit of the other Green Bay Packer quarterback in Aaron Rodgers instead of Brett Favre and throw it away to live to fight another down instead of trying to force something, these are unnecessary turnovers. He's yeah. playing a little too loose on a regular basis. You guys suck it up a little bit. We don't want to, we don't want to fucking have you. Take what makes you special away, but we got to tighten that up a little bit, right? Yeah. So that's, but I do agree with you. I think this game would have been different if yeah. two was out there, if the rest of the script played out, like the, all the errors. Hold on. Who do they got next weekend? Kent. No, Kansas it's City. They have Cincy, the don't they? They have no. Cincy. Yeah. Holy shit. Yes, they do. Oh, yeah, yeah. They have yeah, because Casey's got the Jaguars for sure, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Where, does this is wow. this the, is this the one that comes with a quarter flip? No, that's for if the Bills and Kansas City meet each other, then they would play the AFC Championship in Atlanta. So we're, I don't know if you guys knew it was Atlanta. Yeah. So where's this game at? Buffalo. Oh, it is Buffalo. Buffalo. Yeah, they're number two seed. Yep. Oh, Jesus! I didn't even think about that. Yeah, it my, just my, it just hit me. I'm like, holy shit! We've already got a rematch of what should have played so not even a rematch i guess yeah so the wow. best game of the year that we were about to watch is it what, what night is this one on is this going to be uh it's not going to be an early one that's for sure i can look it up I'll yeah, look it up. yeah yeah, My yeah okay it's got to be the the game of the week you would assume well it's definitely be a lot of cameras on it that's for damn sure I like extra cameras yeah. i mean i don't know that San Fran Dallas is going to be fucking nuts too, man. That will hey. be too. There's a lot. There's a long, rich history with that yeah. one. Hey, while we're while we're on the Bills, can uh, the, they face each other Sunday, two p.m. Actually, it, Bengals the early Bills. Game? Oh, that sucks. They're the early game. Night game's got to be Dallas, right? Dallas Niners yeah, at five thirty on Sunday. Okay, it's a night game. Uh, Giants Eagles on Saturday, which makes sense. Jaguars Chiefs. Um. Early game Saturday, which we're going to make picks Friday, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So don't leak any of that out right now. Uh, So I want to touch on DeMar Hamlin there. Yep. So I, now you guys could tell me if I'm wrong. I mean, I've asked some guys at work who are in the military, but I thought if you did proper, like, so, you know, DeMar Hamlin's up, moving around, socializing. I thought if you did proper CPR to somebody, like, you broke their ribs. You could. You could. Yeah, it's not like you will. You definitely could. Like okay. high, like highly likely, and it's it's the sternum, sternum where the where the ribs are connected. Yep. Yeah, right yep. here. Okay. Yep. Because they tell you when you're going through CPR training, yeah, that don't be alerted if you hear pop crack, because that means you're doing your job right. Yep. So he he's probably bruised up, I imagine. Oh yeah, for, for that sure. Nine minutes, I right? Just think so. It's, I just. 
I wonder I, how. I wonder I mean, how he's doing. Are we? Do we want to speculate on that or not? Like, what do you mean? Are we gonna see him on the field again? I don't think so. I mean, is he they already agreed to pay. Or... They already agreed to pay his contract. No, the full contract because they put him on the IR this year. They they're paying him for this year, the full year. Because they put him on the IR, and it would have took away his money. Mm-hmm. Right. That's why they're giving him the full amount. Right. Yeah. Is it just this year, though? Mm-hmm. That, okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. It wasn't a high salary anyway. I mean, like it was like a... Four or five million? Yeah, I think it was like a six-round pick well, or something. Well, his fucking... His funds got more than that. But, I mean, that's... Yeah. For know. the charity. Yeah. That's for the charity. Yeah. Okay, I, Bernie. Dude needs a house to be able FTX to be charitable. over here. Needs to be charitable. Go ahead. I think if he... Can get cleared. I don't think there's anything that's going to stop him from playing again. You can't tell me there's no other football player that's ever had a heart attack at home. Uh, JJ any... Watt did. Oh, did he have like two of them? Yeah, I think he had like a yeah. The, uh, it was either either heart attack or a misbeat. He had to go get work done. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, this isn't just a heart attack though. They like it, when you lo- when you lose blood flow to your oh yeah to your major um Jesus. Your, yeah, to your, your brain, brain, to your brain, to your brain, to your everything, all, to everything yeah. Yeah. for nine minutes. That's that does some damage. Yeah. Hopefully not. Hopefully, hopefully I'm, everything will be good. Uh, hey, the fact that he came back this fast, where everybody's already wrong. Yeah. So shit. Yeah, I hope we're anything. Wrong. Yeah, I hope we're a thousand percent wrong. I said, it. I was more, in, I was just more amazed that you see the guy up walking around. Yeah. Him. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't think. I so don't, he went to the facility, right? Yeah, he could have easily. This is you like kind of fucked fake? up. Are you going no, that route? No, no, no. I'm saying like oh, I don't. I thought like, he was. A, I'm like, damn, dude. No, no, no. I would never like I, do that. I'm believing in the NFL script, so but we're getting a little <laughs> I extreme. Would, no, I would never do that. But like, what I'm saying is, you think he'll be all right to play next year? He'll be all right to play. And looking at him now, you, if somebody's heart's done for nine minutes, I, I'm not expecting them to leave the hospital. Okay. Right. Okay. I got you. Yeah. Uh, continue rolling there. Sorry, guys. No sleep till Brooklyn's really getting. <laughs> 49ers demolish the Seahawks. Yeah. It was close in the first half, so I was looking pretty good. <laughs> you were for a minute. Yeah. I was. I was looking good. I had a bet rolling at work, too. Just five dollars with a coworker, and I was looking pretty good. I seen that DK Metcalf deep one. I'm like, oh, let's. I, I went my inner miles. Let's fucking go. Let's go. I'm like. Because they were just pound for pound, you know, punch, punch, yeah. punch. Then all of a sudden, the Niners, the rest of the Niners showed up. And they're like, yeah, that enough of this defense. shit. Yeah, what are they, what do they call him? Big Cock Brock. Big uh, Cock Brock. Came to town and fucking rolled them up, man. That was. So, I don't want to go too much down one here. I know where you're going to go with it. Okay. Who are you going with for your quarterback next year? I already debated with him last night. If it you're is the Niners. so hard to not say Brock. Mm-hmm. He looks so good. It, I, I can't answer that question until the season's done. Depends on how far he can take him. I can. So are you – so what? Who is, who is it between for you, though? Because technically Gra- Grappolo is it under contract, so you're not counting Grappolo in that. You're talking no. the two young quarterbacks. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you want to wait till the end of the season. Yeah, so gotcha. – I'm right now. If it ended today, it'd be Brock, and you just let old boy learn, grow a little bit. He obviously had growing pains, and Brock did not with this offense. Let's go, Danny. Right, but uh, Jimmy G is. I mean, right now, being that Brock's there, Jimmy G is gone. Yeah. Yep. So, I, so I do believe he yeah, will be. Yeah. yeah. But on the off sh- on the offshoot that he would, I, which I doubt. There's enough openings where starting quarterback is a possibility on some other teams so uh, jimmy yeah. g is gone yeah that's why he redid that deal you know so that he could be gone after this year right so i'm i'm, I'm in agreement with that now i'm in disagreement with the brock versus him yet it's still gonna be this cat for me if he wins the super bowl i'll shut the fuck up like <laughs> right. yep you're gone yeah you're gone don't care this has been a very nice story it's awesome to see it really is i i, I told you this is not any peer jealousy of any kind. I like seeing, especially from, we don't get stuff like that from Iowa or like notoriety is paying attention. Right. Did right. you see what they put on his, pro, uh, under, under his name? What? 
never beat never Iowa Hawkeyes in yes. four years. Yeah. 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 In four years. I, I, yeah. I thought that was awesome. That, that was awesome. Song. Let's make you're rolling through the NFL. You didn't beat the Hawkeyes, That's baby. Right, baby. But right now I'm going to stick with that. I do reserve it. Like I will clear cut tell you where I'm going to differentiate from you though. If they choose Brock, you need to trade the other one right now. I think they need they would have to let him go right now. You have to try to get the most out of it that you can. You trade him. You don't want these two young guys. You, you don't want Brock overthinking it. Bringing a veteran, savvy, backup quarterback. That's exactly what you do. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. Uh, you know, yeah. I think they're if, both too young. Yeah, you it's like you're going to pick one of the two. Plus, you want the assets anyway. The most you can get. If you get to keep Brock, a perfect scenario for them is Brock works out to where, hey, you know what? We see franchise quarterback in this, right? Now a lot cheaper than a first round, and we can get some assets back for him. for the Because, you know what I'm saying? For the – and his his name is leaving me. Trey Lance. Trey Lance. Trey, Trey Lance. Oh I'm God. still a Trey Lance guy. I still believe in him, and I think he'll be fine. But if you're going to stick with Brock, I do believe you got to trade him right away. Don't even do – don't even do a mini camp or whatever if he goes through that, but don't go through even training camp. Here's the deal. He's still a first round quarterback, right? Yep. So let's say we get through, you know, late in the first round this year and their quarterbacks are gone that a specific team wants to take. You still have one available that you could potentially get in Trey, yeah. right? Yes. So they could get some big pieces for that, dude. Which also, I'm telling you right now, would not hurt my feelings if the Vikings traded for Trey Lance. We need a backup we, plan. We need, well, we need we need the some version of our thought process of the future. Kirk yeah. can only go so many more yeah, years I mean. longer. Yeah. Yep. So, and he's young as shit. But Shanahan would never trade him in conference. Yes, he would. Depends on what you're offering. Yes, he would. The Eagles literally traded with us on a regular basis, and the Eagles won a Super Bowl. So did the uh, Lions. I didn't think we would trade with the yeah, exactly. I didn't think we would trade with the division. They they will do. <clears throat> I was going to go one step further here than you. Okay. Brock reminds me of somebody that kind of stepped in the same situation. Thomas Brady? It's got the storyline, don't it? It does, actually. It does a little bit. I mean, it's scary how good he is. This offense matches him perfect. I don't know. I do not know if he could have went anywhere else in the NFL. I don't, and that's even, and I love Kevin O'Connell. I think Kevin O'Connell can make any quarterback work. Nick Mullins looked just fine back there too in this offense, right? Yep. I, I don't, I don't know if Brock Purdy could have went anywhere else and did what he's doing right now, and and he looks damn good too, like damn good, like it, it was. They're a match made in heaven. That's what I'm trying to get at. I'm not yeah. saying that. Thank God for, uh, you know, the Niners. Brock Purdy would never be. That isn't what I'm getting at. What I'm saying is the success level. They match each other perfectly. Yeah. And he might have just – that's the reason why I just asked you. He might have just kicked a first-round quarterback out of his job. Well, that's what that's, well, that's where I was getting ready to go. I mean, I need you to imagine something. Kyle Shanahan as Dana White and Trey Lance as Dana White's wife just smacking him out the way. Ooh. Ouch. No. The one thing I'll disagree with, I, I get the Tom Brady comparison. Tom Brady wasn't this good early in his career. Tom Brady was known as no. going to the Super Bowl as the game manager. The defense won them for their multiple years. First or second, maybe first two Super Bowls that he was there. First for sure. For sure. Um, the second season, he was still the same. They didn't go to the play. Uh, they didn't go to the Super Bowl. The next one, yes. You could make an argument that the defense did it for them too then. Yeah. So, yeah. yes. Adam Vinatieri won the first two Super Bowls. Yep. Well, that, sec- that second one, was that against the Panthers? That was against the no, the first one was against the Rams. Right. The yeah. second one, I think, I was, think the it was the Panthers. And that was a shootout. It was like 32-29 to 29 final score or something like that. Vinatieri did get the – but regardless, oh, I'm with you on the defense. There is a difference. Yes, yeah. thousand percent yeah. between those two. But I he was the, a game manager. Yeah. Dude is carrying his own. Brock with that defense right now. Yeah. Right? Which makes them very, very dangerous. Yeah. Uh, the Bengals eke out a victory against the Ravens, 24-17, to 17, gentlemen. Behind a record 98-yard fumble return for touchdown. That shit was wild, wasn't it? Yeah. Hometown boy, too. Yeah. Fucking cool story. Yeah. 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 Dude, all my friends back home changed that, uh, their profile pictures. Uh, to the back look? Yeah. No, where, where he's got the oxygen on. He's flexing. <laughs> dude, grew up a Bengals fan. Gets the play there. I mean, 
That was a black and, and black, it, by the way. Should have been called, but whatever. Uh, but but still, like one <laughs> hell of a one hell of a play. Like oh, ninety eight yards. You're the record books too. Yeah. And it was technically the game winning touchdown. Ravens had a shot. Actually, I think they got down there, and I think they actually took a poke at the end zone. Do you know what pisses me off about that play? That whole offensive line was in the end zone. If he doesn't jump over, you did you hear J.K. Dobbins go off about that? He was pissed. Lamar, or oh yeah, him no, the, the fact ball. that he didn't get the. He's like, I'm not getting the ball enough. He had no business. Huntley had no business, you know, going for that and right. stuff like. That. He, he's not wrong. No, he's not wrong. Like J.K. Then, is the man. And then all these, unfortunately for Huntley, where he's getting beat up on this too. Un- like I said, unfortunately, he's not a bad backup quarterback. Is that every one of the Ravens said we win that game if Lamar's there? Basically, petitioning for him to get his goddamn that's contract, f- stop playing around. I'm like, up. I'm like, that's a little fucked up. Yeah. That I'm is. like, you don't, first off, you don't know that. Lamar wasn't playing lights out the last, what, five games that he played in. Exactly. He started the season hot, then tailed off, man. Right. You got to be real. I'm like, the dude that kind of has gotten you there, even though it wasn't sexy, you guys kind of won, stumbled, or whatever, stumbled in, whatever. It doesn't matter, but you still, you still won with him, and he gave you a fighting chance at the end. I agree with J.K. Dobbins. That ball should have went to him. Like what you just said, the whole offensive line was in the end zone. Yeah. If you wouldn't have done the jump bullshit. You know, J.K. would have easily put that in. You know I'm a J.K. guy. Yeah. J.K. would have done a backflip into the end zone on that play. Right. And I, the only thing that's going to hold that young man back is literally his health. Yeah. It's J.K. Dobbins. But He's I a- knew this game was going to be close regardless. I don't care if it was their four-string quarterback. <laughs> this is this is close. It's, a, you know, a touchdown, and it took a fucking – they were behind, actually, for most of it. Yep. Um. When you played division, and that division especially, you knew that they were come out swinging. And nice. kudos to the Ravens up to the point. But maybe the Bengals are the team of destiny too. You know, like Could sometimes be. you need that freak play that is more lucky than anything else. You I, need that to be the team of destiny. It isn't just everyone doing their job 100% correct. Right. I'll right? tell you what, if the Bengals make it to the Super Bowl again, we might be looking at a dynasty. And I hate to say that. We very well could be. Hmm. They have to win multiple Super Bowls I to know. be a dynasty, though. I know. Okay. They haven't won any yet. They won't any. I, if they win this year, okay, that's back. Oh, you to, said you back said back if they go, Super Bowls. You said if they go, yeah, that's what, yeah, they have to win. Okay, yeah. Okay. If they, oh, sorry, if they go and win this year, yep, you're looking at a destiny, de- destiny, dynasty, but, dynasty. But then you got to put in the fact that. We were saying that about the Chiefs not too long ago. They technically still are on the verge of it. It's not shut. They've yep. been to, this would be if they go this year, would be what three of the last four years they yep. went or something like that, right? Yep. yep. So, and if they were to pull it out, I call it a dynasty. I don't know about you, but if you go to four goddamn Super Bowls and you win one, two, if you win two of them, especially, that's a dynasty to me. I could be, I could be different to you, but in other news, the NFL. speaking of Baltimore, the only way Lamar stays is if they franchise him, and that's just going to piss him off. I don't know that they're going to do that. And so right now the Vegas bets, the leading, so the most likely team to end up with Lamar is the Jets. What do you think about that? Oh, my. With that running game, those backs that they have? I love it, love it, love it for the Jets, for Lamar, for the run game. So sorry to the wide receivers. I told you that I'm not sold on him as a quarterback throwing to the wide receivers on a consistent basis. Yeah. But for the rest, for the actual team, the organization, him, and the run game, yeah. And the defense. Uh, What's Houston on that list? The defense is pretty damn good, too. What's that? Was yeah, I can't remember the rest. I just remember looking. Uh, Houston was there somewhere. I can't okay. remember how high. It was like the Jets, Houston, Carolina. Well, my, my did we do we talk about this? Yeah, uh, my my Lamar? Cliff my Cliff Kingsbury yeah. bets out the window. He's in Bangkok. He's in Bangkok. Fucking Bangkok. Lamar. Did we talk daiquiris. about the Lamar Justin Fields thing? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah I still think I remember who I that's heavily on the table. I don't th- exactly. I don't think you shut that down. Yeah. That is so. Perfect. They have so much cap space. The Bears do. You're building towards whatever you move. And you move oh God, the the Ravens wouldn't miss a beat. I don't think. No, exactly. In what other situation? In history, would you find such a perfect right? Si- right? Like fuck, yeah, yep. Wouldn't want to face that. No. Which we would have to. Jimmy I G. Mean, 
Justin Fields, like I told you, Justin Fields would be damn scary for us for the next, as long as he's staying there. He really is. The more and more he gets down, the more weapons he gets, the more scary and dangerous this is going to be for Vikings fans. Yeah. Yep. And anyone up there. Mm, we all seen what happened to RG3. Yeah. Real scary. Cowboys, uh, Cowboys put the Bucks out of their misery, thirty-one to fourteen. Remember that thirty-one. A lot of thirty-ones getting flown around here. A lot of thirty-ones. Yeah, man. People were jumping on the Bucks bandwagon because they won one game. Because Tom Brady and Mike Evans looked good for one game. Yeah. Uh, they finally looked like they should. But it was it was just too. It's like man, the whole season they've been shit. They've yeah. averaged like twenty points a game the whole season. It was in a catch up, right? Yeah. Just like the Vikings, it was in a catch up with the defense. Same yep. thing. Ultimately, there's a reason they only won eight games, right? Yep. In a bad division, nonetheless. So, I didn't, I didn't foresee Dak playing so well. I'll be honest with you on that. Yeah, four touchdowns, but their kicker also missed four extra points. Which, if we want to jump back on the Mike McCarthy needs to get fired, why did he have three tries, let alone four, then five tries to get yeah. rid, of, to get rid of the yips. Nope. No, Fuck dude. That. It, it, when he misses that, two, he's a head case. Down. Yes. Yep. Yep. Leave him alone. Calm it down. You're already ahead. But and, and Peyton Manning called it out right away. Like he's like hit. Remember him jumping on yeah. his seat? I know you've seen the video of him. Yeah. Jump on his seat. He's like, what the hell are they doing? Yep. He's like, that is three. I've never seen it. Why in the hell are they kicking an f- extra point at this point? I'm yep. telling you right now, Mike McCarthy knew they were winning the game. Because of script? Well, no, because when you that defense was all over Brady. That doesn't mean anything. That this is the I, year of the comeback. You already said this I, yourself. I have, I have, but I've never seen a quarterback have that much pressure on him the whole game. Uh, so, Giants beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl, and that's exactly what it looked like. Yes, with a four man rush. Yeah, Michael Strahan. But I'm talking about yips. You know what yips is? Yes. Yeah. Yep. We can grasp it. Definitely had yips last night. Yeah, but it, it, that's why. Like, but yeah, you're you, a bad coach if you keep right, letting him go. Exactly. You don't let it keep going. You don't you, you don't get that out right now. You get that out in practice. You gotta don't let that. it because it's getting more in his head. You don't do it in front of okay, nationally televised okay, I'll give offense. You that. I'll give you that. But I was saying TV is seventy thousand people. You send games. him out there to kick one out of five, and he finally makes one. Okay, we're good for the next game. Let's go. Yeah, no, no, yeah, he's in his he head might with get the cut four now. Like, yeah. you know, it's that bad. Fuck. He, he, you miss four extra points. Don't matter if you made the last one or not. You miss four, you're still in your head. Yep. Doesn't matter. I I agree. So I I'm with. Peyton, I'm with you. Why in the hell would it? After he missed the second one. Exactly. That's it. We're going for two. Yep. We're going for two or we're trying the punter. Don't care. I guess at least that would have made some sense. And like, okay, yeah, he's, a, he's a decent field goal kicker. We'll go ahead and try him. Yeah, Jerry Jones. Do something. Jerry Jones was pissed off. He posted a tweet. Any of my fans got a jersey and come out and kick a field goal? <laughs> no, he, Jerry Jones didn't do. You think that guy's I got, thought you were being serious. You think that guy's got Twitter? Ha <laughs> ha. Probably. And That's now what he does with the young broads. Right. Well, uh, real That's, quick, one more thing about that game, though. Yep. Tony Pollard is the guy. They need to – Zeke needs to be done, dude. He looks so bad. So, yes, I agree with you 1,000%. They need to make that move. I don't think they're going to. I think they'll make the mistake because he's too loyal of a guy. I was talking to Rio about this, too, and he he that's what he fears, too. They're too loyal. They're too loyal to Zeke. <clears throat> when we all know, just like I said – when I said hurtful about the Viking stuff, they're on that too. Yep. Time to move on. Right? Good. I'm okay with it. Keep them, but they shouldn't. They shouldn't. It should be Tony Pollard. Then, quite honestly, you draft another one. Somebody will overpay for Zeke. Somebody can do better than two yards of carry. Yeah. He has his little games here. There, He's been a good team player ever since he's slowed down to this this version of Zeke. Yeah. But he slowed down when the offensive line slowed down. When they when that started going down, so like I've been petitioning since we started this podcast, it has not been Zeke; it has been the offensive line. Yeah, I know the difference between the two. I, this isn't hate on Ohio State running backs. I like J.K. Dobbins, don't I? This is literally I I know what I'm watching. When that offensive line started getting banged up and getting down, what happened to Zeke? Mm-hmm. Went down. Yeah, brother. Tony Pollard's different, and he's different when you watch him play. You know, he's a different speed. He had, you watch people bounce off Tony Pollard. Yeah. Just for whatever reason, because he's not a big guy. No, they just – it must be how fast or hard he's going, but there was two guys that went in to tackle him last night, and they both yeah. – bloop. Uh, don't have a bunch of information on this one, but Darius Miles, a now former Alabama basketball player, was charged with capital murder 
for providing the gun used in the fatal shooting, according to investigators. Yeah, I saw this come across. That's wild. Evidently, in Tuscaloosa, there's a, um, doesn't matter what you call it, a uh, strip of bars where they all go, where people go. And it was a young lady that got shot and killed. It was a, she, oh, I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Apologize. I think she was like 20, 23, somewhere in that ballpark. And I think Darius was in the vehicle too. Because it was the dude, it was him and the dude oh, that he gave the gun to. And shot a young lady. So it wasn't even like he and just the bumped young lady was in a vehicle you know? too. So she, like it was a plotted thing, obviously. Looks like. Innocent until proven guilty. I actually do believe in that, but when it's pretty clear cut. It's Does like, not look good. Yeah. Man. Uh, I remember. The number four ranked Alabama Crimson Tide in basketball too. Mm-hmm. So not exactly something you want to be going through. Is it still Avery Johnson? Over what? There? I think they got rid of him now that you mention it. Okay. That is. That makes no sense. What? So. They. What? So you're saying that it's, clearly it's a plotted murder. They Nate, ha, they Nate ha, Oates is th- the coach. There. They have this girl mm-hmm. in the car with him. No, not with him. No. Her own car. In her own car. In her own oh, car. Oh, okay. And she was parked up. On the strip of bars or whatever. Yeah. Must have had stuff on Aaron Hernandez. No, no, those. Never mind. Sorry. That's just tough when you see young people like this getting to shit like that. Now he's fucked forever. Could have been in the NBA. Over over something. Yeah. Over something ridiculous. Yeah. Most likely ridiculous. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Doesn't Doesn't matter. matter. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Bare minimum, right? Uh, round four. Aaron Rodgers is mulling future with the Packers or possibly elsewhere. Yeah. Did you, he said, uh, he's, he was talking to Pat McAfee and he said he believes he can win another MVP if he's in the right situation. Yeah. They, they can get a haul for him. They can. What is his, I didn't look this up earlier. I'm gonna look it up now. The cap hit? Yeah. Because obviously 50 million, I don't know how that goes for the cap hit, though. Devontae Adams is with the Raiders. Tom Brady's going to be looking for a spot. I don't know. Tom Brady's in that round 17 of I don't know what I'm going to do. That no, was also not, another he's one. He's not retiring. I think he's retiring. I think he's going to go back to Belichick for one year. First off, he needs to retire, but I actually believe he's going to. I think a lot of shit happened in his life. This way, this year has been so. I bet you more than ju- obviously more than just physically draining. Cause he got attacked more often this year, Gordon physically up. because offensive line. Mentally, he's being attacked off the field by media and shit like that. His own personal life is out there in the balance, and everyone's seeing what the hell is going on. Gordon. Well, he either way, he's not coming back to the Bucks. He basically gave a retirement speech to the Bucks fans and stuff like that after the game. Yep. Um. So he's not coming back to Tampa. I don't, I don't know if he retires. Um, so, I don't know how this works in the dead cap part. So go ahead. So go. you could uh, lose to Dallas in the first round of the playoffs or keep Giselle. Ugh, God, this is real difficult. One I get to play with once, one that I can play with all the time. Uh, he gave it all away. And barely made it to the playoffs to yeah. lose to the Cowboys. Yeah. The – Panthers almost pulled that, and they had seven wins. For had season. nothing else to prove. Right, you have nothing else to do. Like stop. nobody's you own, beating like, your record. Yeah, everyone. You own, maybe own you're passing, but Patrick maybe. will probably do it as long as he stays healthy. The He's Super doing Bowl, a lot. The Super Bowls, not the Super Bowls. Okay, that's the only one. That maybe we, we don't, don't know. know. Yeah. We don't know. Maybe if they win another one, then he has two under his belt. We don't know. He's it was a nice a lot, stretch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There was a nice stretch with Tom Brady where the, all those started reeling in right then, right? Yeah. Yeah. We don't know yet. It's too young in Patrick Mahomes' career. I don't want that to happen. Like I said, we work with too many Kansas City guys. I'm tired of watching them strut their shit. But he's so good. He is. I hope they trade him to the Vikings. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, Aaron Aaron Rodgers' cap hit is only thirty one million dollars, but his oh. dead money. Which I don't know if that I don't know how that works. If you trade him versus I, I don't know if that's cut versus trade. I don't know. That's where I don't get that the dead cap. His dead cap number is almost a hundred million dollars. 
So I don't know exactly how that would work. I think if you get traded, it isn't that it isn't that dead cap number. Yeah, I think that's right. It's but if you try know. to cut them. Yeah. Hundred million. If they're smart, they talk to them and they get rid of them. Listen, loves trying to bail on us. Like, let's get some pieces for you. Fucking whatever. Yep. Dude, live better start understanding that this is a good time to come over here and start a football league. We got we got players going. Aaron Jones will be gone next year. He owns a twenty cap. But either way. Players They're, going left and right. Yeah. Real it's quick, be, one team. Is the Raiders the only team that makes sense? Where do you see Roger potentially going just off the top? Dolphins or Dolphins or the Raiders. I think the Dolphins is a very, very high probability to run his offense that, they, that he likes to run also. Uh, you have all the weapons. You have two very, very good receivers. I mean, obviously, one is a top two, three receiver. Another one's definitely a top 12 for sure, right? Um, yeah. And then you have the run game that's – they may not have the names, but the run game has been working. You just – one guy, kind of poor man's version of the Niners. Their defense has some stuff to be desired, but their defense is completely different at home versus on the road. So um, that's what you get Aaron Rodgers for, to win us games on the road with those weapons. What about you? It's going to sound dumb. Seahawks. Okay. I don't, I don't know about dumb, but that's out of the Left woodworks. Field, yeah. Yeah. The, why? Why? Well, because there's no, you can't go to LA. LA's all, they all got their quarterbacks, and that's where he wants to be. And Outside shot at Niners? No. That's where I was going. Well, that's that's the one he wants. Mm. And, he, and he was this close. He almost had what he wanted. Matt Stafford threw a wrench in that. Because Shanahan pursued him, s- sort of. Yeah. But go ahead. I, I was going to say my dark horse would be the Niners, just because he could finish his career back home. Um, and, oh, my God, that would be scary. But then you wouldn't hurt your rookie quarterback's feelings. Either one of them doesn't matter because it's Aaron fucking Rodgers coming in and taking your spot for yeah. a year or two. Yep. That's it. Okay? I... Yeah, I could see it. That's a big dark horse because they're always in flux with like them or him or Tom Brady. It's always them. You know what I mean? Like they're gonna go to the Niners this year. They're gonna yeah. go. It's, it's a, always feels like that. Yeah, I w- I'm thinking. You know what? If I'm the Packers, trade them to the Texans. That's what you get. I could see either one of these two, Brady or <laughs> Rogers, going to Miami too. Either one of them could end up in Miami real easy. With that offense here, this you want you want a true dark horse. You know, let me give you one. Yeah, true dark horse. True. Sean Payton signs with the Panthers. Panthers trade for Aaron Rodgers. They have weapons on the offensive side. They have a running game. They have a decent saying things like this. They have weapons on the offensive side. They do. They have a really really good wide receiver. They have they have some two, pretty decent running backs. They have two they have two good wide receivers. They just don't you don't ever hear of them until they have a game. What was it Moore and I'll look it up quick just to re because Robbie Anderson's myself. in Arizona. Yep, they have another one though. Ooh. Wait a minute, was there was there and talk- they're and they're running Deontay Foreman's a legit running back in this league. They've got two pretty good running backs. Right, but isn't that everybody nowadays? The, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So y- y- the way the way you're making it seem is there this offense has so many pieces and I don't No, no, I said I, no, that. I I believe they have plenty of pieces, like way better off than where probably half the league is on offense. You just don't see it. Besides DJ Moore, I don't know that their offense is any better situated than Green Bay. Why do you say that? I would actually argue that Green Bay has a better better offensive weapons than Carolina. What? Stop it. You don't mean that. Uh, Both of the running backs in Green Bay are better than Carolina's. Oh, Christian okay. Watson's a so, so it depends on what you think of LaVisca Chenault when he hasn't played with a quarterback. But I'm not thinking of even LaVisca, actually. That would be like your third, your gadget guy. It's actually Terrence Marshall Jr. was the other one. Which you don't think about because they don't have – they know that when he blows up, yeah. yeah. When he blows up, then you be like, 
where the hell did this guy come from? Yeah, he's pretty good. And then all of a sudden, he, there's four games in a row where he doesn't get passed to, but the but it's there. Yeah, I didn't think about Marshall. That's that's fair. I do like him. You right. So I'm thinking about the young side of the up pieces too. So that I'm talking about you have DJ Moore, you have Terrence Marshall Jr., you have a gadget player in LaVisca Chenault, and then it would have been better with the one you were talking about with um, Robbie still. But, I mean, because that, that's where the, I thought they had decent uh, – they had a good – wide receiver core when they yeah. had Robbie also. But that's what I'm talking about. And I think Deontay Foreman's a hell of a running back, actually. Especially when they're running 40 times, 50 times, and they know they're going to run it, and they still couldn't stop him. With a backup and a Chubba Hubbard. So I do believe they have a – I think they have a more plug-and-play than what what people think, especially with a, a guy like him. Like it, I'm not talking about the mid-range quarterbacks. I'm not talking about even our guy, Kirk. I'm talking about like an Aaron Rodgers. I'm talking about like a Tom Brady. They have more of a plug and play there for the, one of those guys than what people are giving them credit for. And, you know, to your point, any discussions with Sean Payton, they're talking about this stuff right now. Like, if I come, here's what we're doing. Yeah. And then behind the scenes, they've got to be talking to, like, if in this case, Rodgers is the guy, yeah. they're talking to Green Bay and saying, what would it take if we wanted to have a discussion, right? So, man, that would be interesting. Hell yeah. I Just, got it. I got, I got one a little bit better. We're two years away from the NFL expansion. Okay. Mexico City? No. Uh, they're looking at okay. either four teams in Europe or four teams here in the cities. Um, it's got to be UK. They've wanted so bad to be over there. Yep. It's got to be. <laughs> but they're going to have to and not you know get them in with our teams you know to play. I could see some of these big names taking a year off as long as they know they're a part of one of the expansion teams. Like, we're going to be getting to that point here soon. Okay. It's 2025 is the expansion year. Where'd you see that? Look it up. NFL expansion year. Is that the hope you mean? Yeah, that, yeah, it's not hoping. it's not a guarantee. Yeah, that's but. what I mean. So you don't we don't know if it'll actually happen. That's a legit dark horse, though. All right. I, I mean, I'm just putting it out there. I yeah, mean, yep. I can't see a NFL player saying, "Hey, I want to take two years off." But yeah, Aaron Rodgers certainly can. Dude's banged up. I think he. I think if he's done, I think he'd be done. Done. Like when he's done, I think he would be. It, he wouldn't do a year and come back. I don't think he's that type of guy. Still I could be a thousand percent wrong on that. I think he likes this part right here where he messes with everyone's emotions, emotions man. right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here you know, but once he's done, I think he would actually be done. You mean to tell me these fuckers think I'm coming back? <laughs> right. That's exactly what I'm getting at. Yeah. Uh, it sucks because then we're gonna have to watch him on Jeopardy the rest of our lives. No oh, shit. You don't watch Jeopardy, so you don't have to watch it. Who is? <laughs> uh, gentlemen, that's what I got. I did have another one, but we're running a little bit long. And, but yeah. it was just, it was more of a filler than anything. So, Yeah, it's all good. Miles, you got a good story tonight? No. Because I, I think you were done with uh, Strange Laws, right? Or did you have more? Oh, I have more. I just kind of, we, we've been running what's other the, stuff, the, kind of. Yeah. What's, what's your Strange Law? Come on. I got a real quick, short, simple one. And mm -hmm. then in the state of Washington. All lollipops are banned. We've uh, we talked about this yep, one. We Did we? This yep. One. Okay. Then we, move on to another one. It's still a good one. <laughs> I came. I forgot that we talked about that. Yeah. It is. Then it's going to be this one. Washington State doesn't allow fake wrestling. Yeah, we've talked about this one. Shut up. <laughs> no, we didn't. I don't think we talked about that one. No, we haven't. No. What, what's fake right. wrestling? Like WWE? Probably WWE, I would assume, right? That's not real wrestling. The state of Washington? Yeah. Or is it you can't do <laughs> leg wrestling or something? What the fuck or, would fake wrestling be? Well, like. You can't hide the cucumber? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, do you remember Ladies Man, the movie? Yeah. Yeah. And Will Ferrell and his buddy always, like, randomly <laughs> wrestling, jerking around. Okay. You know, like, maybe it's got to be a sanctioned wrestling match. And then the cops show up. They're probably in Washington. <laughs> nah. No doubt. Uh, okay. Doesn't allow fake wrestling. So if you're going to do it, be real about it. It's got to be real. Got to be real. Uh, 
Let's see. Do I have one? I, I mean, I got one, but I don't know if I've said it on here. So, okay. Well, flirt, flirt with me. I got a million of them. A little fussy. Do yeah. a little fussy. You know yeah. what? You know what? I got something for you. I got something for you. Okay. And I won't say any names because respectable people, but if you sell a business <laughs> and, uh, you know, you sell your business, you are no longer the owner of that business, correct? Correct. Correct. But with your degree and everything, the business, the place that buys you out in the contract would like to bring you on to their place to be in charge, right? Yeah. So, Dana White. Dana White, no. Uh, so I'm not gonna say who I'm going with this. No, no, yeah, no, 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 no. He's yeah. being. Yeah. So it actually is legitimate what he's saying. Okay. That's yeah. kind of what yeah. happened. He sold the UFC, but he they still oh, brought him over to yeah. be the CEO yeah. and to yeah. be the face of it after yeah. the, after they sold it. So, so go ahead. Yeah. So just like Dana White. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Um. You no longer run the place. You no longer get to act like you run the place. You put on a smile, you do your job. So if customers come into the place that you no longer own, that a franchise owns, you do not treat them as it's still yours. Uh, so for instance, mental illness is a real thing. Um, never question somebody when they come to your business for something a doctor might tell them they can have or yeah. not. Yeah. Uh, what, what are you, who are you trying to protect here? Do you want me to say it? No, no, we don't need to say it because Why? it's still respectable people. I still do not have a problem with those people. I, I just don't, she, they don't need bashed. Everybody knows who it is. You know, you're not talking about Tammy's pharmacy. Are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're a dick. Yes, I am. Well, you got mistreated, right? So why do why do we have to play I, nice about it? I know I did, but why I, do I have to play nice I, about I, my I, our I, platform? Yeah, but he but she was allowed to use her platform to make you. It, well, exactly, and uh, so okay, so I so I'm right. You're right. Say, Daddy's right. Daddy's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. Miles, that's enough. You never get to say that again to Jimmy. You okay. can say that to me. You can never say that to Jimmy again. You, you stop okay? it right now. Just so we're clear. Go ahead. Daddy's right. Go ahead though about your daddy wasn't there. Daddy take wasn't me to there. The fair. <laughs> to change my underwear. Daddy wasn't there. <laughs> uh, and all I'm getting at is when people come in to be get prescriptions, it's usually a thing. I don't, I don't want to be in line. First off, mm. I don't want to announce the world what I'm getting. Right. And if I call you, it's to see if my script's ready. And that's it. That is all it needs to be. You, you don't get to ask me. Why are you, why do you, why do you need this yes. refilled? So <clears throat> where I need to back you on this even more, I was thinking about this. Okay. Yeah. Cause you told me the story, the full thing, right? Yeah. Where I need to back you is when have you ever, I know this has not happened to me. Not since I came here, some version of like, whatever. Yeah. When I lived in Mason, whenever you pick up a prescription, you know, the only conversation they have with you, it doesn't matter where you go. Could be Walgreens, could be right there in the Peds Clinic has a. Um, I don't know if you've been over there, but they have a they have a um, pharmacy right there. Doesn't matter where where you go to pick up your meds in Mason. Swear to God, the only question they ask: Have you ever used this before? Yep. So do I need to go through and That's, like uh, yeah. let you know like the stuff like this? Like, do you need? But uh, have you had this before? Do you need extra consultation? Uh, consultation. That's literally it. Does there's no other shit. There's no other bad looks I get for anything. It doesn't matter for anything. Any anything I've ever gotten, never had that. It's literally. Do you need a consultation? Have you ever used this before? That's all it is. Yeah, so, and, and to be fair, this is a common occurrence with another friend of ours. Yeah, all three of ours. Yeah. Um, uh, by the way, uh, Elizabeth Pharmacy. Uh, thank you for being a pharmacy, not a. Uh, I guess I mean, I'm not even going to say that, but well, I'll I've, be, I've I'll try, be, I'm sorry. Hey, but, uh, I'm a little shout tired out to, here tonight. Uh, shout out to Elizabeth pharmacy in Britt, Iowa. Yeah, they've they've been real. I've heard nothing but positive things, not just them either. My very, wife said they're really good. Very nice people. Yep. Um, if I could shorten no the judgment. story, if I could shorten the story here, uh, pretty much what it is, is your, your job is bedside manners. 
my job is to pay for what I'm coming there for a service and that service is to get what another person with a higher degree told me I can have not what you think I can have I don't know how to word it yep. yeah yeah gotcha. um, a doctor a doctor yeah versus you're, a pharmacist yeah so yeah they so when all this started changing was around uh, COVID time because there were still doctors that would prescribe other things for COVID than what they expected you to take to prevent or help with COVID, right? Mm -hmm. And so the pharmacist started rejecting people's prescriptions because they thought they were doing better good or some bullshit, right? Yeah, and so time. then it's just carried on. And so they're starting to question more and more things now when it's like, you're, you're not a fucking doctor. You're just making the shit. Right. You're the, you're, the, you're the middle guy. Yeah. Plain and simple, because if they, because if the pharmacy was literally in the doctor's office, literally in the doctor's office, they will go grab my shit and hand it to me right now because yeah. they prescribed it. So exactly. stop. You're the middle guy. You're making coinage off of this process here. You're a glorified drug dealer. Yeah. Okay. So get the fuck out of the way. Yep. Oh well, I mean, to be, you know, to be fair, there was, I went two days without my meds. You, you don't want to be in my household. <laughs> uh, you know. You, it's bad. Yeah. I mean, something so you I need had. something. Right. Yep. And they were trying to question you. on it. Yeah. And uh, they sent out a very vague letter when it got sold. And it's like, Hey, all the scripts are going to be sent here. Nothing to worry about. You just call when you're ready. I call when I'm ready, but nothing but a headache. It's just, it always has been though. Or for quite a while. I've heard, I've heard things. Yeah. Yep. And you, she's a nicer person than that though. She really, maybe is. outside of her, she really is. Maybe though. outside of her businesses. So. Yeah. This yeah. is a business, Miles. Right. So the words of wisdom. If you're in the nursing field or any medical field, you yeah, you got to know your bedside manner. Bedside manner, baby. I That's mean, right. you don't know Makes why sense. You, think about you don't know why people are coming in there. Sometimes you don't deserve to know why yeah. either. Exactly. Right. You don't need to know shit. No. Yeah. Let's be none real. Ya. None yeah. Well, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm here for the two horse pills for chlamydia. Yeah, sorry, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm here to pay you way too much money as it is right. for this shit. Ooh, so. You're welcome for your hourly wage. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Hundred <100%. laughs> percent. Well, we have, as Jimmer said, we have gone a little bit long tonight, but we definitely appreciate Mr. John Kennedy yeah. getting on. Uh, everybody out there, make sure you tune in tomorrow night. TBS, not ABC, right? TBS. Yep. Uh, after AEW wrestling, the Power Slap, basically the season opener, I guess you could call it. Yeah. Tomorrow night. Be sure to check that out. It looks like it's going to be pretty gruesome. But we'll go ahead and start to wrap her up, ladies and gentlemen. If you found us out there on the interwebs somewhere and you love to hear our beautiful voices, maybe see our beautiful faces, be sure to like, subscribe, share the whole nine. Where's it available, Jimmer? Anywhere and everywhere uh, podcasts are available. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and of course, YouTube. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Let's go, baby. And we'd love to tell a good story, even Miles, when he's kind of down and out, tired from a lack of sleep. But I tell you what, if you've got one, Miles, what should they do? In the DMs. Slide into the DMs, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. Hey, Danny. What's up? Sorry to cut you off like that. But, uh,. Do you guys want to do a bet if John Kennedy's the one that starts the brawl that he was talking about in that house? Oh, shit. Oh, I bet it. He didn't motherfucker say he got drunk in there every day. Uh, I would go with, like, he definitely was an antagonizer. Okay. Like it was. Go. Like it was, yeah. I'm sorry. I just, yeah. I just thought of that. Yeah, no, that's good, man. That shit sounded like it got wild in the house. That's yeah. for sure. If that guy's in there, you know it's fucking. He's smacking the shit out of everybody. No shit. <laughs> well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you, everybody, for listening. This is 3 Geek Sports. We out.